Imagine this. You're in an office, papers flying, phones ringing, and your copier just finished churning out a fresh stack of crisp, perfectly printed documents. You glance at it and think, it printed this so fast, and it doesn't even look like it used ink. That's right. Copiers don't use the kind of ink you might squirt from a pen or printer cartridge at home. Instead, they rely on something called toner, a fine, powdery substance that somehow turns into solid, sharp text on paper. Why do copiers use toner instead of ink? Let's find out together, right here on History of Simple Things. To answer this, we need to take a quick detour into how copiers actually work. Modern copiers, especially laser printers, use a process called electrophotography. Sounds complicated, but the idea is simple. A laser beam or LED light draws an image of your document onto a photosensitive drum inside the copier. This drum then attracts the toner particles, which stick only to the areas where the laser has drawn the image. Finally, the toner is transferred to paper and heated so it fuses permanently. Now here's the first clue as to why toner works better than liquid ink. Ink is, well, wet. It can smear, it can soak into the paper too much, and it dries slowly. Copiers are fast. They might print dozens of pages per minute. Using liquid ink at that speed would be messy and inefficient. Toner, on the other hand, is dry. It's a powder that melts onto the paper when heated, creating sharp, durable images in seconds. No smudges, no waiting for pages to dry, just crisp text every time. Toner might seem like just colored dust, but it's actually a clever mix of plastic particles, pigment, and additives. The plastic acts as a binder melting when the copier heats the paper to bond the pigment securely. This is why your copier paper doesn't just come out with loose powder that smudges everywhere. It also explains why toner prints can last longer than regular ink prints. They're more resistant to water, fading, and everyday wear. Another key point is the particle size. Toner particles are incredibly small, sometimes smaller than a human hair. This allows them to be manipulated by the electrostatic forces in the copier with incredible precision. Ink, being liquid, doesn't interact with electricity the same way. It would be far harder to control on such tiny scales, especially at high speeds. So from a chemical and physical perspective, toner isn't just convenient, it's practically tailor-made for the copier's method of printing. You might be wondering, how did someone even think of using powder instead of liquid ink? Toner wasn't an overnight invention. The journey started in the mid-20th century. In 1938, Chester Carlson, an American physicist and patent attorney, developed the first xerographic process. Carlson was experimenting with static electricity and a type of powder to copy documents. It worked. Instead of messy ink, he could create copies using a dry powder that stuck only to charged areas. This discovery changed everything. By the 1960s and 70s, copiers had moved from large industrial machines to smaller office-friendly models, and toner had become the standard. Using ink at this scale would have been impractical. Offices needed speed, reliability, and durability, things toner could deliver. Now let's break down the practical reasons toner beats ink for copiers. First, speed. Ink jets, your typical home printer, spray liquid onto paper, a process that is precise but slow. Laser copiers using toner can print dozens of pages per minute without smearing. Second, longevity. Copies made with toner are less likely to fade or bleed. You can leave them on a desk for years and still read them clearly. Third, maintenance. Toner cartridges last longer than ink cartridges, which need frequent replacement. Copiers are designed for high-volume use, and constantly refilling wet ink would be a nightmare. 
Finally, environmental and cost considerations. While toner is more expensive up front, the efficiency and longevity mean offices spend less on replacements and experience fewer misprints. Ink might be fine for home use or small volumes, but for the daily grind of a busy office, it simply can't compete. Toner technology hasn't stopped evolving. Modern toners are more environmentally friendly, with reduced particle sizes, less waste, and some even made partially from recycled plastics. Some high-end printers now use color toners that mix on the drum, allowing for vivid, detailed color printing that rivals inkjets for quality. Interestingly, the line between toner and ink has blurred in some areas. Liquid toners exist, combining the benefits of traditional toner with the precision of ink. But even then, the principle remains. For speed, durability, and high volume copying, toner continues to be the material of choice. It's not just tradition, it's physics, chemistry, and efficiency rolled into a tiny powder. In the end, toner is a quiet reminder that big problems often need surprisingly simple solutions. Offices didn't switch to toner because it was flashy or new. It won because it was faster, cleaner, and built for scale. A fine plastic powder guided by electricity might not sound elegant at first, but it turned copying from a slow, messy chore into something reliable and almost invisible. And that's the real triumph of toner. It does its job so well that we rarely stop to wonder how it works at all, until now. So next time you see a copier at work, remember, that crisp, smudge-free stack of papers isn't magic, it's science. Toner was invented out of necessity, refined over decades, and perfectly suited to the high-speed, high-volume demands of modern offices. It's dry, precise, durable, and incredibly clever, proof that sometimes the simplest solution is the one that lasts. Toner proves that the smartest inventions aren't always the most obvious ones. A simple powder, guided by electricity, solved speed, durability, and reliability all at once. Sometimes the technology that changes everything is the kind you never think about until you stop and ask why. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.